I'm so bored. All we do is sit around all day and play in the sand. There's got to be something more interesting to do than this. Yeah, it's so boring here. Yeah, man! These sand castles are crummy! Let's go on a vacation! Yeah, nice! Yeah. Let's go on vacation, yeah. man! Let's go cruising for girls! Or, how about a cruise down the Nile River? Did somebody say cruise? Help out my Faluka and let's tour the Nile. Oops! Wait! Wait for me! There is no better way to see ancient Egyptian attractions than on a cruise down the Nile River. I hope you'll agree. Oh! So I guess it's kind of like the monorail, you know, at Disney World? Well, yeah, sort of. Anyway, the Nile River is the longest river in the whole world. The Nile River runs through Egypt by flowing up from south to north every year between June and September. The waters of the Nile, swollen by the monsoon rains in Ethiopia, flood over the surrounding valley. In ancient Egyptian time, their calendar was based on the cycle of the Nile. The year was divided by the three seasons. They were Akhet, which is the inundation or flooding season, Peret, the growing season, and Shemi, the drought or harvest season. Layers of fertile soil were annually deposited on the floodplain during the flooding season. Because of these rich, fertile riverbanks, Egypt became one of the richest countries in the world. Egypt has been called the gift of the Nile because without it, there would be no Egypt, no ancient civilization, and no magnificent history for us to see. I can't wait to cruise down the Nile. Yeah, me neither, Mom. Yeah. Our tour begins in Cairo. Cairo is the capital of Egypt and is known as the Cradle of Civilization. It is the largest city in the Middle East and Africa and lies at the center of all routes leading to and from the three continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe. On its west side lays the ancient Egyptian city of Memphis, which is Giza the site of the three largest and best preserved pyramids. The ancient Egyptians built the pyramids as tombs for their pharaohs and queens. There are about 80 pyramids known today from the ancient Egyptian time. The Great Pyramid is the most famous structure in the world and the only surviving of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Great Pyramid is 408 feet high. The Great Pyramid was built for the Pharaoh Khufu of the 4th Dynasty around 2650 BC. Be careful, up ahead is the seaweed of death. Hey! Hey, look over that rock over there! Ah!
Thanks for the save, pal. Now, let's get on with our tour. We will next visit the Great Sphinx, one of the most famous monuments in the world. It has the body of a lion and the face of a man, which closely resembles that of King Kefren. The Great Sphinx has become badly damaged over the years due to natural erosion and also from Napoleon artillerymen using the face as target practice. <laughs> Mummy hate tourists. Must destroy them. Our next stop on the Nile will be the city of Luxor. This city has perhaps the largest number of ancient Egypt monuments. Some of these include the Temple of Amun, Tomb of King Tut, the Mortuary Temple of Ramses II, and the Tomb of Queen Nefertari. Temples were large buildings made of stone that would last forever. The walls had scenes on them that were carved into the stone and then brightly painted. The scene showed pharaohs fighting in battles and participating in rituals with the gods and goddesses. The ancient Egyptians thought that the temples were the actual homes of the gods and goddesses. Our first stop in Luxor will be the Temple of Amun, which is an ancient ruin and is a major part of the Temple of Karnak complex. The Great Temple of Amun is part of one of the largest religious complexes ever built anywhere in the world. On the court's north side are two large statues of Amun and Amunet, which were dedicated by Tutankhamun. It is one of the most visited sites in all of Egypt. Amun was a local god of Thebes, now called Luxor. I'm hungry. Can we get something to eat? Sure, we'll stop at the next McDonald's. Arr, me order no pickles! Arr. 